Let's see what this does. Goblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The visions cloud your inner eye for a brief moment once again. You see the hobgoblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon, and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. The hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. Another drow true soul. As if there weren't enough of you. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. Flyer's build is smaller, its garb plainer. A fearsome creature even in death, but not the one that tormented you. Yet it too roamed the Nautiloid. It would have seen you, known you. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You choke on black smoke as the hobgoblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth. Lucan Ock, I'll call deck, Shulko Hanks! The hideous corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Your heart seizes, and are questioning the creature might recognize you as its killer. Bonds, not in words, but memories. You see a clawed hand open a holding pod, devoid of flesh, only darkness. Damn it! That tells me nothing! The memory fades, and the corpse awaits the next question. the interrogation, oblivious to your attempts to sway him. Tell me who killed you, freak! No games! Again, a vision comes to you. A memory, seen through the creature's soul-dead eyes. You see a clawed hand opening a holding pod. The murk clears to reveal a face. Yours. It can't be. 
Zorg Oaks from Sol. once more. No, no! I'm not done! Riddles, all of it, and nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat! No answers, no killer, and no damned weapon! <sighs> that damned trow was right. Can't let her get all of that glory. Seems I ain't done with you. Report to the drow. Minthara's the name. She's mounting an attack on that blasted grove. Tell her you'll join her. Praise the Absolute. That item was rather attached to it. You're about to face the consequences.
Yes, here. in that corpse, brimming with potent magic. Time to get going. Attention! mind and well in it how delicious don't mind if i do what's in here Things have stayed interesting.
The corpse regards you lifelessly. Eternal glory ours. Absolute binds obedience. rises, your parasite squirms in recognition. Oh, stop it! Stop it! You wretched worm! There's no doubt, this creature is responsible for your parasite. And it's waiting for your questions. Fractured images fill your mind. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, null teeth dripping blood. You see other mind flayers arranged in a serene circle. Absolute unity. Absolute power. You see the tadpole in the mind flayer's hand. Not a parasite. Perfection. Rebirth is sloughing flesh. A new skull housing cold, sharp intellect. Dark, empty pods flicker across your vision. They demand new flesh. You watch through the creature's eyes as it curses the starborn slaves. They want the ones from the ship. Darkness and sun barely contained. You see Draw Ragslin writhe. A tadpole clings to the Mind Flayer's fingers. The Goblin King bows, obedient. The flesh of his tribe becomes the flesh of the Absolute. The Mind Flayer's corpse twitches, then collapses again. It will speak no more. If not over, been through. <clears throat> What's in here?
Still breathing, despite everything. Light on my feet. Very well. The ringleaders have to die. The very natural order of things is in danger. Thanks to them. You did it! You actually did it! The leader's dead! <laughs> Praise Sylvanus! No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice, but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. Let's get out of this pit, firstly. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. seems willing to speak, but not to its killer. Something's blocking it from the other side. Positioning. No 
one stopped me yet. Gods are watching me. Well, well, well. Let's go. What now? have seen everything. my luck again. is my happy place. again. Step quick. 
can't slow down. I'm done. I can't wait to sleep. That might be worth a look. That thing is tiny, and I am not. Well, hello. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? That... that can't be. You're either an excellent storyteller, or you've experienced something quite exceptional. Hmm. Tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers, unless... That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? Oh, ridiculous! Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just 
tear in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. Can't slow down. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. You haven't been using the Parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsey knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. I am not sure yet. To find the answers, we must first find the source. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute, and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. I have powers of my own. Unique powers. But know that we are alike. Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. 
You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. The power I used to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. Cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. Don't fidget. The needle must slip behind your eye, not through it. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye, then reaching into his bag. He produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now, don't move. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then, tap, tap. Stab. Do you feel that? Ha! Huh. I think we have the blighter on the run! <sighs> I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further! Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. There appears to be an amount of cosmetic damage.
please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta.
One day, I'll catch a break.
join us. Never mind. Time to press ahead. <laughs> 